Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about my favorite filament, TPU. But before we get into it, my standard disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, never been a doctor, haven't, been play, haven't played one on TV, haven't been asked to play one on TV, so not even a young Doogie Howser. So with that, I want to kind of get into it with this. So I'm going to start the recordings running up there. So you've seen ABS before, and you'll see the TPU up here. And one of the things, I just really love the TPU filament because this stuff really sticks to itself, creates a quality product. Now, it is a flexible filament. It does require, you know, a zero clearance, you know, uh, extruder to drive through. But the results of this, uh, you know, have always amazed me. So, um, again, my favorite here. So, in, in matter of fact, I even adapted the Wanhao. Uh, you can go back and look in a pr uh, prior episode to actually specifically print this stuff. So really great stuff. I love working with it. But let's now talk a little bit about the air quality of it. So again, we ran through this with this the standard just as we had done before. And again, I've developed an enclosure just like with the other one. So it's kind of a contained situation. And I think everybody by now, you know, knows, you know, my, my premise on this is, again, you know, the release of particulate matter is the release of particulate matter. And, and it's not, you know, how much it is at one individual printing, but it's how much over, you know, continued usage is I like to use sort of the cigarette scenario. One cigarette is going to kill you, but the habit will. So, and not that this is going to kill you or what have you, but again, I'm just sharing my premise. But the fact is, is you release five particles. Five particles are going to be in the environment. You do it a second time, you're going to have ten particles. This stuff just doesn't magically disappear. But with that, let's sort of get into this. So, again, I was a little bit surprised you know with TPU but maybe not so one of the things as I've mentioned before in this I find really kind of the stickier that the stuff is to itself the less it seems to create particulate matter and you know I think that might just be a logical byproduct of the two sticking together I guess so um, you know maybe somebody who knows a little bit more than me can comment but as we see here uh, the particulates were actually lower than PLA which I found very interesting and again, I ran at a higher temperature, obviously, to print TPU than PLA. And these are the numbers I got. And obviously, between the 0.25 particulate, particulates and the uh, 10 are, are pretty much the same. So you can see that these were all basically small, uh, it was small particulate matter, which was released by the TPU. I also, again, because it tended to, you know, wane uh, on one side, I gave it a little bit of VOCs. Again, as I've mentioned, I've gone through the frames, they've averaged it out, and it does appear to be weighted to just a very light amount of VOC. So, not a lot of VOCs. Got no formaldehyde from this. So, all in all, I think this was um, a pretty good. So, this... Pet G is another one of my favorite ones. I don't do as much with Pet G as I'd like to. I probably will, especially seeing this in the future, do more with it. Um, and again, as I covered out in the last video, I don't think that this is all inclusive because, again, you know, as Scott Boy UK had brought up, you know, the sensor can't detect everything. And that's sort of what I've been saying in this and focusing really on the particulate information here. And again, the, you know, lower the particulate information. Uh, the happier I've been with it, or the more comfortable, I should say, I am in printing it. And again, you know, ABS is still the heavy outlier in, in this whole thing, as you can kind of see, and I've done an overlay, obviously, here. So, now, with this being said, we've covered really the gambit, and you can really see here... You know, ABS and HIPS are, you know, you know, the two related plastics at the far end of the spectrum, you know, which have potential risks. And then you start getting down into PETG, PLA, and TPU are seem to be more benign. And again, this isn't a qualification of safety or anything like this. It's just simply what I observe. So, and again, I've talked a little bit, uh, you know, in the past video about the feedback from Gothboy UK about the sweet smell of HIPS being you know polystyrene polystyrene especially polystyrene oxide not a good thing so with this I, I'm pretty happy so far with this because this is where the majority of my printing takes place I do print a bit with hips and ABS as I've covered before many times that is all exhausted outside through a ventilation system not in my shop uh, however with PETG 
PLA and TPU. Uh, I, you know, I pretty much just use in-shop HEPA air filters to clean the air with that. And I do highly recommend that even if you're running this in your shop and even with these lower numbers still to run some sort of adequate HEPA air filtration system. And I'll have some links down below um, because I plan on doing a series, or not a series, but a video on that. I've got a really nice unit and I keep meaning to install it in the shop and I just haven't had time. Right now I'm running two standalone units. Uh, at each end of my shop again my shop is 16 feet by 40 about 43 42 feet long something like that and i've got two larger uh, floor units in here that i keep running on a continual basis uh, to kind of keep the air clean so anyways hopefully you found this interesting we have one more to go through and that's going to be bridge nylon that we'll do a week from now and then after that i'm going to do sort of a summary sort of my general thoughts i'm going to talk a little bit again about uh, resin based uh, printers you know my concerns with them why i have the concerns also kind of wrap this up where i see this at in joe's opinion anyway your opinion may be different and that's fine it's your opinion and uh we may do some, I've had a number of people write me about black PLA versus red PLA versus the strange PLA. And I might do a little bit more about that in the future. But as far as the series goes, I'm going to do nylon, then I'm going to do a summary. And then I'll probably give it a little bit of rest and then maybe revisit some of those down the road. Because I want to take this time that I've been using for this to really get into a couple of the other things. I know I've uh, talked about doing you know, uh, the electrical monitoring and things like that, measuring, you know, power usage. And I, I want to get to some of that too before it gets too old uh, because I did the unboxing of the power meter. I've actually got some new power meters, these Sonoff units, uh, which some viewers talked me into getting. So uh, I plan on wiring some of these up and experimenting with them too, as well as the other meter to, you know, understand the power usage of 3D printers, maybe CNC's and a couple other things. So I think it's a neat, uh, neat endeavor. So anyways, give it a thumbs up if you found this interesting. Really like TPU. Numbers seem to be good, not an endorsement of safety. We'll catch you in the next video where we talk about nylon. Don't forget Swag Shop up there. Subscribe's going to be over there. And we'll catch you guys later. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.